Grindr is the largest and the first uh, geospatial dating application, and it is a gay dating network. We have users in over 198 countries in the world. Grindr started in the living room of our founder, Joel Simkai, in 2009. He essentially realized that there's going to be this GPS capability available on the mobile phones and he came up with this idea that he's going to build this technology allowing essentially proximity dating, being able to discover who's around you and be able to connect with those people. So he started this company without any funding whatsoever and the company grew organically and now we have millions and millions of people all over the world. Data is very important because it guides us in terms of what decisions we need to do as a business, um, and that goes for the features that we want to develop, uh, how users are actually using the app. Historically, Grindr has done a lot of focus groups and trying to figure out what are the features that the users actually care for, but we really started uh, to care about big data and data analytics more and more. When I started with the company, one of the first things that we did, we established a big data group to be able to capture the data and start analyzing it. We used Hadoop, we used Spark, we used Redshift. So a lot of our infrastructure is cloud-based. Uh, we use Amazon. The problem with that is that you need to have a fairly sophisticated team on the ops side to, to set it up, maintain it. Our engineering organization grew from really four people to around 35, 40 in the last two years. Uh, but you need to remember the scale of, of traffic that we support. We see anywhere from 10,000 or 20,000 calls per second on our API level. In terms of chat, we process up to 1,500 messages per second. So you can imagine to capture all that data and then being able to actually process it, it's a problem. And if you want to build a big data infrastructure from scratch to support the level of data that we gather, that is a dedicated team with, with experts in area of data ingestion, encryption pipeline, storage, then processing. We need to rely on people who are experts in that area and let the experts be experts and then let focus our own team to build the things that truly are competitive advantage that I can just buy off the shelf. So treasure data is a good example where I kind of have this big data infrastructure as a service that I do have to pay for, but then what that means is that my own team doesn't have to dedicate cycles to, to configure, maintain, scale, all that stuff. They can do other things. We are using treasure data right now uh, primarily for data capture and storage pipelines. The fact that Treasure Data provides us a way to capture data from the clients and the service side and then have this infrastructure that I don't have to worry about to provide this data lake functionality and then I have a whole bunch of different connectors to, to then export that data out, uh, that's huge.